Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Today I'm going to give you an update video on the 1961 Airstream Bambi renovation. This trailer is uh, 16 foot long, 13 foot on the inside. And if you've been following the series, I've been go doing some cabinetry work and uh, moving my way along. And today I wanted to show you where we are this week. So last time we left off, we had a video on the black holding tank and I've made the decision to order a replacement tank after uh, looking at the condition of the tank itself. So that's going to take a little while. They're built to order and uh, one of the companies is shut right now due to the, the stay at home orders. The kitchen cabinet here I rebuilt. In a previous video I had mentioned I was going to rebuild it. Now I wanted to use as many of the materials from the original Bambi as I could and really the only thing that was salvageable was this piece of cabinet here. So it's the original cabinet structure on the inside and what I did was I put an oak veneer on the outside. So it comes in a big roll. The roll I had was about 30 inches wide and 8 foot long. What I had to do was remove the cabinet out of the trailer, sand down the finish. The finish looked like this. It's very rough and, and uh, had a finish to it. I had to sand it all down. And then the veneer is really, really thin. And it has a 3M self here back. And what you do is after you prep and clean the surface, you lay down the veneer on top of the existing veneer and you roll it out. And you get it, make sure it's, it's adhered very, very well. There's no bubbles or wrinkles in it. Make sure it's perfectly square. And then what you do is you take a router with a bit that's made specifically for laminate and veneer and you route the outside edge and it has a ball bearing that runs on it and it will cut it really really clean. So once I did that then I went to the front cabinet area here and I did the same exact thing except now I had to cut out holes. So what I did was I drilled the hole here, here, into this hole and I stuck and plunged the router in and I followed along the whole outside and cut the hole and it's very very smooth and it's very small possibility of it coming chipped and undone. So now I could sand this really smooth and I could pick my stain out. In the cabinet drawer video You've seen me build the boxes. This is one of the boxes that I completed, but then I installed the drawer face on it. The drawer faces that were here originally are similar plywood with veneer, but a little bit thinner. So the one I picked is a lot thicker. And um, in a little bit, I'm going to show you a technique on salvaging these drawer tracks. I couldn't find the drawer track replacements online and these were actually in pretty good condition. You can see inside that's the track the drawer slides in and out of and this is the part that lays on top. Uh, these were very very difficult to get out but I came up with a technique and I want to share that with you. Before we get to that I drilled a hole in the cabinet so I could run the wires through and down into the truma and this is the temperature sensor. This is what will sense inside air temperature and tell the furnace to kick on. I also cut a hole for the Truma Combi uh, control here. So now I can control the systems once it's all set up. Now I didn't screw this in, this is loose. Uh, because once I stain and varnish these cabinets, then I could do a permanent install. I sanded down the edge of the countertop a lot smoother now. The sink is mocked up right now, but that's refinished. We talked about that earlier. 
I drilled the hole for the faucet. So that's the kitchen galley faucet I'm going to be using. And I had to rebuild this whole section of frame here. Okay, and the shelf. Remember the original shelf? So this is uh, birch plywood. And there's a piece of oak trim on the front with a routed insert for the shelf here. But this whole frame here, here, and all the way around up to this point, which I rebuilt, had to be rebuilt because this is what it looked like previously. This is the cabinet door. These things are pretty heavy. This is the original frame that was in that location. Uh, as you can see, it's just a thin veneer. It's all cracked. This is all splintered and chipped. And I guess over the years it just cracked down the side and someone glued it all back together. And then the bottom here was uh, had some water damage to it. So I wanted to salvage as much as I could, but I could not salvage this. When I made the new one, I decided to improve it because if you look at the thickness here, this is about 5 8 inch. And if you look at the thickness here, it is uh, just about an inch. So I made these wider so it's more supportive and I compensated by making a door opening smaller. I also cut and prepped all the wood for all the doors. I made the panel inserts here for the side of the cooktop. So these original panels were just like this but there's lots of holes drilled into it and cut into it. And this sits into a routed insert here, so it's flush. On this side, I made the panel that sits into the dado in the back here. I also made the new floor for the toilet that will be over the black tank. And then I used, I sanded really well. And all the cracks that were in original shower pan, the stress cracks, I sanded this down, feathered in where all the cracks were, and then I put in this gel coat scratch patch. And you just smear it on with a little stick, and you fill in all those holes. And then you let it dry, I let it dry for two days. Then I sanded it, and then I painted it with the same Rust-Oleum kitchen bath and tile spray that I used to sort of spray this sink and uh, came out really nice and that uh, eventually once the trailer is complete that will be uh, installed again. This cabinet here which I am salvaging I'm going to do the wood veneer on the front of this frame here. I'm going to redo all this. I'm going to sand it down, put the new veneer over it, and then take the router and route around. I'm going to remove the furnace and I'm going to install a garbage pail and a laundry basket. And then I've decided if this door does not sand up well, I'm going to cut out the section where the lifetime warranty is and then route it and make it into a picture. But now I want to show you the technique that I used to remove this track off the bottom of the drawer. So this is one of the original drawers that I'm not going to be using anymore and I have to get this track out. There's uh, some nails in the front here, staples, and some staples in the back. But there's also, it's very hard to see, there's staples running down the middle of the drawer and those are the ones that I came up with a technique to remove. So I'll show you what I have to do. For demonstration purposes, I'm using a larger drawer. What I want to first do is score the edge where this track is glued to the bottom. And inside the drawer, I can see the series of staples, because they're a little bit rusty, of where the bottom is stapled into the drawer box. And uh, what I'm using here is a bit that you'd use to drill out to make little uh, dowel piece, dowel plugs. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill through the little on board right around the staple, right to where this strip is in the back, not into the strip, right to it. So it appears there's only three staples. So I'm going to line the center of this up with the center of the staple. One, two, that's three. Okay, now they're drilled out. All three. Now I can go to the back and I can start prying. And I, this is already a, a split up here, so I'm trying to prevent it from splitting anymore. So you just want to get that under. I'm trying to break the adhesion point. And once I can get this staple loose here and pry the, the whole piece up, the part that is uh, you know, plugged to it should stay with it. of the box I have to get in here and fry back on it and I should remove it from the front of the box this one's pretty glued That's it. Got the piece out. I only split a little piece, but it's still together. And now you can see the bottom of it where Airstream glued it back in the day and see the little raised plugs. That's where the staple was. That's where it would have split. So now all I'm going to do is take this tool, this uh, chisel here, and pry it right off. There's a staple. Okay, now I have to remove these other staples here at the top. Get them with a different tool later. And then I can take the chisel and scrape whatever glue is left off. So now it's nice and smooth. Now when I go to install it on the new drawer, it will install well. I could glue this little split here. I'm gonna remove these staples here, sand it, and uh, it's good to go. But you know, if I could find these brand new, I would have bought them. But I don't know the terminology for what this piece was back then. And every other wood track, drawer track that I could find was completely different than these. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love it, and I'll see you soon.